Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Hive 2. This is video seven, and today we're talking about filters. So let's go to a new preset. And basically, Hive comes with 10 different filters and the ability to bypass those filters if you don't want to use them. So the way we know how all this is getting routed, right, we have oscillator number one, and it's going to filter number one because this light here, OSC one, is illuminated, and we can hear it come through. It's going through this amp envelope right here. So let's say we want to have oscillator 2 also go into the first filter. We just select oscillator 2. And we want sub 1 as well. And maybe sub 2 as well to make it a party. So we have oscillator 1, sub 1, sub 2, oscillator 2 all going to the first filter. Now what we can also do is we can also use filter 2 taking the input from oscillator one as well. So you can have oscillator one go to both filters and affect them differently if you would like to. So basically here, we're just kind of just modulating, moving the cutoff and the resonance, just affecting oscillator one going only to this filter, but over here, it's still going here as well, just not getting affected by this filter. So let's say, for example, that we want to have a couple, so it's OSC1, Sub1, OSC2 going to this first filter, and we have something kind of cool going on, but we want to send the output of the first filter to the input of the second filter. So we look on the second one, and we see, okay, we have filter number one. We want to click this here, and then also don't forget to turn the volume down of the first filter. Unless you want to hear the volume of filter one as well, in addition to this. But if you want filter one, directly go to filter number two and hear that output, then you want to turn the volume down here and select filter number one. All right, so let's kind of go through some of our filters here. So we click this list here and we have this first one, which is going to be bypass. So basically bypassing the filter entirely. However, this input here is still going to work. So keep that in mind as well, and this volume as well. But as far as like cutoff or resonance or anything like that, or the mod envelope, LFO controls, those are all going to be disabled. All right, so let's go back to a new one here. So we have low pass 24, low pass 12, band pass, high pass, band reject, peaking, and then we get into the kind of crazy esoteric filters, which are going to be comb, dissonant, reverb, and sideband. These four we're going to discuss in another video because I don't really want to skip over these and kind of just... We, sh we should spend some time on these because they're actually very, very, very cool once you kind of get to know them a little bit. So moving on from here, what's actually really cool inside Hive is you kind of have these built-in kind of things right over here, which makes modulation really, really nice, right? So just to get the basics out of the way, we have our cutoff, right? Attenuating the frequencies at the point that we determine based on the cutoff. And then we have the resonance, which is basically accentuating this point here, which is going to be the cutoff, giving us these kind of values or sounds. Now, the stuff where it gets kind of really cool here is through this input over here. So in normal and dirty synth engine, so over here, the normal and then the dirty synth engine right over here, the volume is going to affect the tone. So it's going to kind of give you some non-linear distortion. So kind of keep that in mind. And then in clean mode, it's literally just going to be volume. So if we go to normal mode and kind of increase this here. You can just check that with a sine wave. So yeah, keep that in mind as well. Let's go back to a sawtooth here and kind of double click this back to normal. So now we have this mod envelope. Now this is one of the coolest things I really like about Hive because it makes modulation so fast and so easy. So we have this knob here, mod envelope, and we have this one and this two right above it. So right now it's selected on one. Now that means it's corresponding to this envelope right below it here. So once we let's bring our cutoff down, maybe some kind of like this, maybe give it some resonance so we can really hear something. Now, all we need to do to get this to modulate the cutoff using an envelope is just literally turn this to the right. And the more depth, the more we turn it here. We can go negative if we want to here, which is kind of... We're going to have our cut off a little bit higher for that. Now, let's say we're already using this mod one for something else. You know, we have this target here. We're modulating something else, and we don't really want to use mod one for the cutoff. 
that we can select two here. And now this knob is going to affect the cutoff using this mod to envelope over here, which is really cool as well. And the same kind of goes for the LFO, right? So we have our LFO kind of already set up here. We don't need to drag this LFO onto our cutoff and modulate it that way. We literally just have to turn that LFO knob. Now let's say this one over here is a little bit slower. So we go to number two and it's going to be reading this LFO right here. which is really, really awesome. So it makes it a little bit quicker instead of having to actually drag and drop and modulate things like there, it's already set up for you. You just kind of had to turn the knobs and adjust your envelope if you want to do that or your LFO, which saves you a whole nother step. So next up we have the key follow, right? So as we play different notes, you know, if we play higher up, the cutoff is going to change according to the notes that we play. And this will pivot at MIDI notes number 64 in case you care about that. So if we have a cutoff pretty low down over here and no key follow, can barely hear, let's bring this up a little bit here. The cutoff will not move based on the notes, but if we turn this all the way up here, we're gonna get some more higher frequencies in there as well. And then we have last one here is volume for the volume output of the filter. I should mention here we have the link here. If we click the, select this here, it's going to link these different sides here. And if we move the cutoff of those, we can kind of see those moving differently in the resonance as well, which is kind of cool, the volumes and stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of a cool thing. If you haven't overlooked that, if you want to link different sides, you can totally do that. And one little cool hidden thing that uh, that I want to show you here, which is kind of awesome. So let's say we have this regular sawtooth. Let's give it some unison, like four. Give it some detune. And maybe make our cut up here and give it some nice healthy resonance. So here's a nice hidden parameter. So let's go down here into the matrix and where it says none here, let's right click that and find our filter one over here. And down here, let's look at spread here. Now for the modulation source, let's use LFO one because it's right here, might as well. And maybe slow this down just a bit here and then give us some depth here and take a listen. So here's kind of an exaggerated version of that. So it's basically shifting the cutoff in opposite directions from the left and the right channel. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of those cool little Easter eggs here in Hive that I'm gonna kind of slowly introduce because there's a lot of cool stuff in this synth that you might not know about. But yeah, and even though we talked about it before in the synth engine video, I do want to remind you that if you change these different modes here, the filters are going to sound and react differently. So it's kind of cool. We have all these 10 here, but then you change the synth engine and it's going to sound different. So it's almost in a way you have much more than just 10 filters. So kind of keep that in mind when you're making some different patches, maybe switch around the engine here and kind of see how that affects your patch. You might like something different uh, a little bit more than the other one. So yeah, that's pretty much the first part of the filters in the next video we're going to be talking about these crazy ones and here's a comb res or dis dissonant reverb and sideband and there could be a lot of cool stuff here we're gonna show you some cool stuff to make some fun sounds with these sidebands so yeah thank you for watching hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video